Hi everybody. Today my topic is partial derivatives. Before starting partial derivatives, we must have a thorough understanding of differentiations of functions of one variable. So far, we have dealt with the calculus of functions of a single variable. If we look at this equation, y equal to 2x cube plus 3x, right away we can say that y values depends on x. And we can write an equation in general terms as y equal to function of x. Now, if we differentiate y, which is a function of x, to obtain the derivatives, then it takes the form as dy by dx equal to 6x square plus 3. Also to be noted here that the dependent variable is differentiated with respect to the independent variable. But in the real world, physical quantities often depends on two or more variables. That's why to understand clearly functions of two variable, I am taking this right circular cylinder having radius r and height h. To find the total surface area A of this right circular cylinder, we have to write an equation A equal to 2 pi R H plus 2 pi R square. In simplified form as this one. Here A is a function of radius R and the height of the cylinder H. So we can write A equal to function of R H. Most important point from this equation we learn is that the area will change if either or both of these change. In general, if we take a term Z which depends on X and Y, then can be represented by this Z equal to function of X and Y. Here we can call Z as the dependent variable and X and Y are independent variable. I take an example as z equal to 2x cube plus 3xy plus y cube. Here z can be differentiated with respect to x to produce a derivative denoted by del z by del x equal to 6x square plus 3y. Of course treating y as a constant and it can also be differentiated with respect to y to produce another different derivative like this one del z by del y equal to 3x plus 3y square. So for functions of two variables there are two derivatives. Now, these two first derivatives and we have this equation. So, second partial derivative we can find by differentiating first partial derivatives, this one del z by del x with respect to x as del square z by del x square equal to 12x. 
treating y as a constant. Again, second partial derivatives we can find by differentiating first partial derivative with respect to y as del square z by del y square equal to 6y keeping x constant. Again, these two first derivatives and this equation z equal to 2x cube plus 3xy plus y cube can also be differentiated either with respect to x or with respect to y to obtain various second partial derivatives. So second partial derivatives can find by differentiating first partial derivatives with respect to y is denoted by del square z by del x del y equal to 3 treating x as a constant. Again the second partial derivatives we can find by differentiating the first partial derivative with respect to x as del square z by del y del x equal to 3 here treating y as a constant. Now as we know when we study functions of a single variable we use differentiations to locate the position of maximum and minimum points but techniques to functions of two variables are different so what's the difference here we do equate first partial derivatives del z by del x uh, or del z by del y equal to 0 for locating the stationary points but it does not identify maximum points minimum points or points of inflection so to distinguish between such points in other way I can say to identify the nature of stationary values of the function we can make use of a test that involves second partial derivatives and we consider the expression like this one and we can evaluate this expression at each stationary points. So nature of a stationary point is determined by this expression if the result is negative stationary point is a saddle point if the result is positive and if del square z by del square also positive then we have a minimum points if the result is positive if del square z by del x square less than zero i mean negative then we have a maximum points. Now to get details of it we need to watch YouTube video using this link or you can type in in YouTube adustube dash 3d plot in Excel. So you will find in details of how to get minimum points, maximum points or saddle point as well how to plot a 3D graph. That's all for today and thank you very much for watching.